Frank. Yes, Doris? Don't look so glum, honey. After all, I'm not the first girl that was ever forced to leave college because she was broke. Yes, I know, And besides, think of the nice little write-up I'll get in the school paper. We understand that Miss Doris Knighton is leaving Colton at the beginning of her junior year to enter the business world. Good luck, Doris. Yeah, and even that'll probably be tucked away underneath some ad for Sweeney's Barbecue. <laughs> Why don't you try to laugh it off like I'm doing? Doris, there must be some way you could stay on here at Colton. Uh-uh. Let's not go through that again. The only jobs left in town are full-time ones, so I can't work my way through. So, as for... Doris, let's both leave Colton. Let's get married right away. We Frank, could... you're awfully sweet, but that's out of the question. It means everything in the world for you to get your degree in times like these. Maybe someday I'll be able to complete my course. Home economics, you know... Home economics? A... That's the answer to our problem. Why don't you try for that Home Economics Essay Award? It's as good as a scholarship. Frank Martin, if you think I could win that award, you're, well, you're crazier than I thought you were. Well, why not? The girl's a whole lot dumber than you have won it. I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, well, lots of smart girls like you have won it. You could try. Well, that much money would keep you in Colton at least another year, and you're eligible. Look, Frank, in the first place, I haven't got a subject to write about. And in the second, there isn't enough time. The papers have to be in the judge's hands two weeks from Friday. Finding a subject ought to be easy enough. Can be anything on home management, right? But you don't understand. Every subject you can think of has been done. Last year, a paper on quick frozen foods won. The year before that was something about nutrition. And the year before Doctor, that... There ought to be one subject we could think of that would stand a chance. Well, if there is, I can't think of it. Something important to good home management. Doris, I've got it, I've got it. You've got it all right. Wax. Wax? Look, look, do you know what makes this apple shine when I rub it? Why, of course. It's the wax, the wax on the skin that makes it shine. Our instructor showed us that in home economics. Yeah, well, we learned about it in chemistry, too. That all plants, fruits, flowers, and leaves are provided with a shield of wax, especially in the early stages of their growth, as a, a, a protection. Wax is nature's protector against the elements. It helps plants and things to conserve their own moisture. Wax. Nature's own protector, now used by women everywhere to protect and beautify their homes. Protective housekeeping. Oh, Frank, that's a wonderful subject. But I don't know enough about wax to write a paper on it. Well, what you don't know, you can learn. But there's so little time. I wonder if I could do it. Sure you can, Doris. You got it. It's our only chance. Come on, I'll lend a hand, huh? All right. No harm in trying. Say, who ever started this Home Economics Essay Prize, anyway? Money for the Dinwiddie Home Economics Essay Award was set aside in 1923 by Miss Agatha Elvira Dinwiddie, one of the first home economics experts. Agatha Elvira Dinwiddie, eh? Well, hang on to your bonnet, Aggie, because here we come. <laughs> does not record the name of the first man ever to discover or borrow the secret of wax from nature. But perhaps our best evidence of one of man's earliest uses of wax is in the paintings recovered from the tombs of the Egyptian pharaohs. Ancient Egyptian artists mixed pigments in wax. Then when each painting was finished, a protective coating of wax was often applied. And with such good effect, that many of these treasures and their colors have been perfectly preserved for more than 4,000 years. 
In ancient Athens, whose golden age taught all the world how to live, the Greeks had a word for just about everything. And they had a word for wax. Kiros, they called it. And they used it to protect and beautify their homes and temples. They also waxed the fine wooden hulls of their ships to increase their speed and protect them from the ravages of seawater. The skin of a skate, that's fish, was used for this purpose. Still more uses for wax were known in Roman times. In fact, Pliny recorded that wax was useful to man in numberless ways, even serving as a protector for walls and weapons. In his Metamorphosis, the poet Ovid refers to chestnut bowls waxed polished was their wood. As European civilization progressed through the Middle Ages, artists and craftsmen made increasingly frequent use of wax to beautify and protect their artistry. Elizabethan and Jacobean oak furniture was rubbed with beeswax to give it luster. While in 16th century France, the magnificent parquetry floors of the nobility chateau were waxed and polished by servants who wore felt pads or slippers and skated laboriously across their wide surfaces. These floors not only survived the steady tread of some three score generations, but unlike stone steps and floors of equal age, now rutted and worn, this parquetry has mellowed has become more beautiful with the passing of centuries. With the advent of fine furniture craftsmanship in the England of Adam, Heppelwhite, and Sheraton, the steadily increasing use of wax for finishing and polishing brought attempts uh, to produce a wax that would last longer, one that would not become sticky or tacky in warm weather. In fact, Sheraton, in addition to creating his masterpieces in matchless style of design, also left for posterity a written description of his experiments with wax and of his wax finishing methods. Later, the use of wax in homes became more popular. Wax making recipes or formulas, like those for food and soap, became quite valuable and often were handed down from mother to daughter with the same sense of value accorded family heirlooms. And this held true until household wax was prepared and manufactured commercially late in the last century. Today, I understand, the average little homemaker has more uses for wax than uh, some sophomores have excuses for cutting my classes. Well, uh, could you tell us some of them, sir? Some of the excuses? No, sir, I mean, well, I mean some of the uses of wax around the house. Well, I'm afraid that's a little out of my line. I'm a professor of history by uh, trade, something of an amateur chemist. Why didn't I think of that before? Why didn't you think of what before? Well, your mother, she's a good housekeeper. I bet she uses wax around the house a lot. Why, sure she does. Come on, let's go. Oh, thanks for your help, Professor. Uh, yeah, thanks a million, sir. You're very welcome, I'm sure. Uh, blue taffeta it was and cut on the bias. Doris, it was the darlingest little dress you ever laid your eyes on. I can imagine. But did you see the sport dresses on sale at Showfields? They're so original. Well, I saw one Look, the other you day. two, I love you both, and I hate to break up this important conversation, but as I recall, we came here on business, and it wasn't the dress business. Of course. Mom, the only way Doris can stay in college is for her to win that essay prize. I understand, son. Now, we've got a swell subject on wax and protective housekeeping, but Doris has got to learn all she can about it and learn it quick. Well, bless you both. I'd be glad to tell you all I can, but I'm afraid it isn't any more than most housekeepers know. Any more than most good housekeepers. <laughs> you see, Mrs. Martin, I've learned a great deal about the uses of wax in my home economics classes. That is, how it makes housekeeping more efficient, how it helps preserve and beautify furniture, woodwork, floors and things. But I don't know enough to write a paper about it. Being an orphan, I haven't had to keep house myself yet. And Well, would you tell me everything you know about wax? I mean, how you use wax and in what ways it helps you. Well, let me see. Where should I begin? I suppose I might start with the floors. Mm -hmm. They're mighty important. Because I guess every woman wants beautiful floors, and it's only natural she should want to keep them that way. Well, they do get harder wear than anything else in the house. Much harder. 
And when a floor has no protection of any kind, you'd be surprised how quickly dirt and stuffing can spoil its finish. And when that begins to wear away, it's not long before the wood gets sort of um, spotted and shabby looking. Of course, you can wash it. But washing a floor all the time is hard on the finish too. To say nothing of how hard it is on your back. <laughs> After a while, the finish wears away and the wood just soaks up water till the grain raises and sort of stands out. It makes the floor look even worse. But here's where wax comes in. You see, a coat of wax gives your floors the protection they need and keeps them bright and shiny. And best of all, wax makes them so easy to keep clean. Yes, there are plenty of good reasons why a woman should wax her floors. Hey! See what I mean? When a woman raises two children, two boys. I certainly do see what you mean. <laughs> Hiya, Frank. Hiya, Doris. Guess what? Stinky Williams says maybe I'll make the Jimmy, team. How many times have I told you not to wear those terrible shoes in here? Oh, Mom. Well, <laughs> see you later. I declare that child must track a bushel of dirt into this house every week. <laughs> Mrs. Martin, I've learned how to apply wax in class. But tell me, do you have any special home tricks in applying wax? No, I think I wax my floors like most people do. I always follow the directions on the package, and it certainly isn't hard. But I do try to spread it as thin as possible. And when it's ready for polishing, I use either a weighted brush or I rent an electric polisher from the Jones store. Well, how often do you wax the floor? That depends on the amount of wear a floor gets. New floors should be waxed and polished every few weeks until they're really bright and shiny. After that, in a small sort of home like ours, three or four times a year is plenty. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't the wax wear off sooner in some places than it does in others? I mean, like what a door wear in the front hall. Indeed it does. But that doesn't mean you have to wax the whole floor again. You simply touch up those places with a little wax and polish them. You mean it doesn't leave a mark or a patch or anything? Nothing of the kind. It simply blends right in with the rest of the floor. What about furniture? Well, the advantages in waxing furniture are just as important as those in waxing floors. Now take this lovely old cabinet that used to be grandmother's. I suppose it's been waxed for 150 years. It's it's so soft and mellow looking. You've no idea the pleasure I get just looking at it. It must be a joy to live with furniture as lovely as that. Look at the luster. Here's something else. This table. My, how nice. It's really a cheap little thing, only cost a few dollars. That's right, I was with Mom when she bought it. Do you mean to say that wax gave it that luster? That's right. You know, I think almost any wood is beautiful if it's polished nicely. That's why I never cover up my tables with doilies like we used to. You're certainly giving me a lot of information for my paper. You've only begun. <laughs> Come on. Doris, I want you to see this. Here's my wax supply closet. Are all these waxes? They certainly are. A lot of women use paste wax and some use liquid wax. But both seem to do the same job, so I guess liquid wax or paste wax is just a matter of personal choice. And this is cream wax. Cream wax? What do you use that for? Oh, mostly for furniture and woodwork that needs cleaning as well as polishing. Now, let me see. Oh, yes. Over here. Looks like Jimmy's been in the cookies. <laughs> now, you don't need the FBI to tell you that. Now, what? There you are. Not only clean as a whistle, but not so likely to get dirty and much easier to clean the next time. That is wonderful. Well, here's one I know. Car new. Sure keep the old family bus shined up with that, don't we, Mom? Oh, I see you use glow coat, too. That's for kitchen floors and linoleum, isn't it? That's the stuff that polishes itself without any rubbing or buffing. You just put it on and let it dry, don't you? That's right. When Frank was a boy, I used to scrub this floor every Saturday. Now I just put on glow coat once in a while, and that's all there is to it. The floor is always as bright and shiny as it is now, and the way it's wearing looks like it'll last forever. Well, I always knew wax was an important item in the home, but I had no idea it made so much difference in housekeeping. Well, that's not all. There are so many extra uses for wax, and honestly, I'm still finding new ones. New uses? 
Yes, oh, there are hundreds of ways wax can help save you time and work in a house. Paper lampshades, for example. Wax protects them and keeps them from drying out and keeps dust and fingerprints from showing. Waxing windowsills is one of my favorites. It really protects them against the rain and dirt that come in through the window. We always wax our leather things. Our luggage is waxed and all of our shoes. I've even waxed my pantry shelves and my kitchen walls. It makes cleaning so easy and then there's all kinds of toys and Venetian blinds, refrigerators and kitchen cabinets. Oh, there's no end to the things around a house you can protect with wax. Now I know what you mean by protective housekeeping. Mrs. Martin, you're an expert. Well, I've had some experience, Dorothy. <laughs> but the real experts are the people who make the wax, the good wax. I've tried a great many, and there's a lot of difference in waxes, I can tell you. Gee, I'd like to find out something about that for my paper. Exactly what makes a good wax and why. Wait a minute. Racine, Wisconsin. Frank, Racine isn't so far from here. Why don't you take Doris up there? They tell me the biggest wax plant in the world is there. I'm sure they'd be glad to give you any other information you need. Oh, Mrs. Martin, you're a darling. <laughs> now, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. There isn't anything like it in the world. Frank Lloyd Wright designed it, you know. Will you come this way, please? be a wonderful place to work. like the shape of things to come. Doesn't it? I wish we didn't have anything to do but look around. Yeah, so do I. But I guess we'd better get on to the research laboratory. Okay. And so you see, we've come to find out a little more about wax. What wax really is. And, and what goes into the making of a good household wax. I see. Uh, are either of you taking chemistry? Oh, yes, sir, I am. Well, I get a little in my home economics course. Well, undoubtedly, then your professor has told you something about wax, probably in treating on the subject of fats. Just what is wax? Well, chemically, uh, wax is an ester of a long-chain fatty acid with a long-chain monohydroxy alcohol. Is that clear? Clear as wax. Just between us chemists, of course. But uh, seriously, and to put it simply, Wax is any material having the general consistency of beeswax, uh, which is secreted by the bee to protect its food and its young, as undoubtedly you already know. Beeswax was the first wax ever to be used as a polishing material. 
and it's still in use today, still important in the manufacture of some wax polishes. And you'll find nature's use of wax in the animal kingdom is very widespread. For example, were it not for the natural wax that waterproofs the duck's feathers, they'd quickly become waterlogged so that the bird couldn't swim. And we'd never have known the expression, like water off a duck's back. And pity the poor sheep caught out in the rain if his long wool were not similarly protected with the wax we know as lanolin. And there are a number of mineral waxes, too. Most important of these is paraffin, widely used commercially, including the manufacture of wax polishes. Montan wax, derived from brown coal found in commercial quantities in Germany's Rhineland, and azokarite, mined in Poland, are two other good examples. And in the vegetable kingdom, there are as many natural waxes as there are plants, because the flowers, leaves, and fruit of every plant are covered with wax each with its own individual qualities and characteristics. There's rose wax, for example, sweet-smelling, created by nature to protect the petals of the rose, on large flowers and on the smallest, such as mimosa. A delicate coating of wax helps them retain their own natural moisture and freshness. Orange blossoms also have their generous share of protective wax for the same purpose. We also have quite a collection of other plant wax samples here in the laboratory. There's, uh, coffee wax, wax from the leaves of the tea plant, flowers of lavender wax, canaba, and others. Some of them look a little different, but chemically speaking, they're all pretty much one and the same thing. Animal, vegetable, and mineral covers quite a lot of territory. Of course, most of the waxes you've seen here aren't used commercially, but as a research laboratory, it's our job to know about them. Well, then how do you manufacture household wax? Well, all manufactured waxes are actually a blend of waxes to which solvents have been added. The secret of a good wax is in the blend. A good paste wax must be smooth and firm in order to be easy to use. When dry, must polish to the highest degree of luster and provide the most durable protective coating possible. What's more, it must be uniform, always the same. Uh, perhaps the most important wax used in the blend is carnauba wax, obtained from the carnauba palm tree, found only in the arid northeastern section of Brazil. Carnaba, or carnauba, as they call it in South America, is nature's way of protecting the moisture in the leaves of this palm tree against the equatorial sun. Consequently, it's extremely hard. This, plus its natural luster-producing qualities, makes it an ideal ingredient for our manufactured waxes. But if it has all those qualities, why couldn't we simply use carnauba and nothing else? Well, alone, it's too brittle to handle easily. It's too brittle and scratchable to give protection. So we blend it with other waxes to our own special formula. And this produces a smooth working product containing all the desirable characteristics of several different waxes. You see, a certain balance of soft and hard waxes must be attained to make the perfect wax. For example, a wax containing too little carnauba wax would be smeary. It would never produce a really high luster. On the other hand, a wax with too much of the hard wax in it would produce the other extreme. A sticky coating on a wood surface is really a dust catcher. Here, let me show you. Here are two surfaces, one oil polished, one wax polished. Now watch. See how the dust sticks to the oil polish? On the other hand, look here. You can actually blow the dust away. And so to achieve the proper blend of wax for the home, we must combine all of the hardness, the toughness, the softness, the plasticity, the polishing and drying qualities of several different waxes to make the perfect wax for protective housekeeping. Mm, that's good. Thus does modern wax bring not only protection, but beauty, pleasure, and easier housekeeping to American homemakers. Say, that sounds okay so far. Thank you, sir. Doris, it looks to me like you have a swell chance to win that prize. Well, even if I don't win the prize, what I've learned about the use of wax in the home is going to be very valuable when I... Use wax in our home? Yes. <laughs> Here, let me read you the finish of it. What's more, the homemaker's use of wax through the years has resulted in the discovery of new uses for wax and new wax products in modern American industry. New special wax finishes have been developed for waterproofing, weatherproofing, rustproofing, for planes, ships, automobiles, trucks, trains, for metals, wood, rubber, and leather. Special paints containing wax have been perfected. 
In these ways have the protective uses of wax been extended into manufacturing and industrial plants throughout the country. But nowhere has wax contributed more than in our homes. Modern women have come to recognize wax as an indispensable aid to really efficient housekeeping. They have come to appreciate more than ever the protection it affords their precious possessions. And perhaps above all, women who use wax regularly have come to know the comfort wax can bring in pride, beauty, and the very joy of living. Oh, it's silly. 